jumping, pitching, snorting, and trying to plow every other cowboy under. Right, Uncle. A cowboy is literally a person who deals with cattle in a ranching situation. A lot of rodeo in its history really is anchored back in the practices of a ranch. On ranches, cowboys were competing with one another, horse races and stuff like that. I think the basic tradition is a tradition of manliness, bravery, perseverance in that old way. You've got decades and decades and decades of imagery that say that's who he is. You know, there was never any allowance for another way of being. Certain things can't be part of the discourse of the cowboy. Homosexuality, God knows. You know, if you're gay, you aren't a real cowboy. But what does that mean? My name is Wade Earp. I was born in Lubbock, Texas, 45 years ago. I am related to Wyatt Earp, the famous gunslinger that was a lawman. I have a brother named Wyatt Earp. My parents had a sense of humor. I'm just glad that they didn't do White Virgil and Morgan, because I would have had to go through life as Virgil Earp. I live on a small ranch uh, just outside of Dallas. It's four acres just enough uh, for one person. Hey guys! These are my goats. And they're spoiled rotten. Some mornings I can have it done and... Jack, get out! Go! Come on, Dex! Here, Dex! I gather eggs every day. I feed chickens, I feed horses. I actually compete in rodeo. Our next cowboy, Wade Earp out of Dallas, Texas. All right, looks like he's ready. Here he comes, six seconds is all he needs. My goodness, that's good for first place. You know, I live, eat, breathe, cowboy. I just happen to be gay. If you think John Wayne and all this boss didn't have any gay people, it's a pretty nice gun you're scratching those matches on. Come to a gay rodeo because there's gay cowboys and cowgirls. Do you have a strategy? Going yeah, I'm there? scaring the bull, obviously. <laughs> There's 13 events in all. Bull riding, junior bulls, bronc riding, barrel racing, your flag racing, pole bending, calf roping on foot, breakaway roping, and team roping. Shoot dogging. Plus we have the, the three camp events, because we're homosexuals. Thanks everybody for uh, allowing us to be a little goofy out here. We like to have fun. Everywhere, especially. Let me show you where we rodeo. This is where we are right now in Dallas. Kind of the way that the rodeo works is that you have a season, you get accumulated points to go towards finals, and you have to be in the top 20 of the event to get an invitation to finals. And then the granddaddy of them all is Finals Rodeo that's in Fort Worth, Texas. And that's where we hope to win. When you win an event at a rodeo, you typically win a, a buckle, and it's like the gold medal of the rodeo. Every first buckle that I have, I've kept. But this is my first barrel racing buckle. And I wanted to win a barrel racing buckle so bad that I finally won it. It looks like something you buy at a truck stop. <laughs> 
very proud to have won around 180 something buckles. But the one prize that's eluded me since I started is all around cowboy for finals. That's the season winner, the big kahuna, the all around cowboy that wins it all. And I've been close. I've been a runner up, but I'm not getting any younger. The body don't bounce like it used to. But maybe this is my year. to the Hot Rodeo. This weekend brings us to the 429th Gay Rodeo event. We want to thank all of you guys for putting your butts in the seats today. Without you, there's no reason to have this rodeo. Good day, good afternoon, good year. It's been a great year. I'm Doug Graff. I'm the president of the International Gay Rodeo Association. The IGRA is, is a large association of associations covering North America and Canada. Some will say we're an amateur association, some will say we're, we're a pro-am association. It's not a lot of difference in gay rodeo and straight rodeo, except for a few events, but you know, we're basically doing the same thing. Maybe the outfits are just a little different. <laughs> when you tell people you're involved with rodeo, it's like, but is a gay rodeo? Really? Are, are the animals gay too? You know, it's like, no, the animals are not gay. It's the people who are gay, but then we also have straight people in a rodeo. On straight. On straight. There's the ring. We are married. We're known as the straight couple on the rodeo circuit. <laughs> what I'm proud of is that anyone can come and play with us, or volunteer with us, or dance with us, or, you know, put on a dress with us. You know, in traditional rodeo, the speed events are done by females, the rough stock events, and the roping events are done by males. In the IGRA circuit, all 13 categories are open to everybody. In the IGRA rodeo system, we have 13 events, and all 13 events are open to men and women. It's kind of ironic they say it's traditional because way back when, when rodeos first started, women competed in all the events. Women competed on bronc riding, they competed in bull riding, they competed in steer wrestling because a lot of the guys all went off to war. And when they all came back, you know, like in baseball, they shut the women out of the baseball and kind of shut the women out of rodeo as well. I've had the experience of going to practice pins or events where they won't let me compete because they don't allow girls to ride. Rough stock riders were few and far between now. Fortunately, IGRA is one of the few competitive circuits that let us compete. This is my playground. Uh, first one I have here, this is my Mighty Bucky Barrel. Some instructors really love this tool, some instructors think it's a bad tool, but uh, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with working on whatever you got. You know, I've been called dyke and all the other vulgar terms, but it kind of fuels the fire a little bit more. You know, bull riding defines me more than being a lesbian does. A couple of these are my more valuable possessions. Uh, my Ty Murray, a competition used uh, PBR glove that he wore during the 99 PBR season. The top one is an autograph poster, two-time world champion, PBR champion, Chris Shivers. He happens to be my favorite rider. Definitely, uh, you'd say one of my heroes for Having a hero that's, what, 15 years younger than me. <laughs> of course, my prize position is my Lane Frost autograph. 
people don't part with those too often, so I was lucky enough to snag that one. And I feel like I'm like an encyclopedia of bull riding sometimes, you know. I can tell you exactly who made the rope and what it's made from, and left rope, right rope, American rope, Brazilian rope, all the details on it. When I first started bull riding, two bucks, I came flying off and I land underneath him, boom, steps on me and off he goes. And all I heard was, welcome to bull riding, bitch. I bounced up and went, yeah, I wanna do that again. It's the scariest roller coaster you've ever been in your life. But there's no seat belts and you have to hold on with one hand. I've had a few injuries in my time. I'll just go from the bottom up. Uh, I have two screws in my right ankle, ACL, meniscus, two rods, plates and screws, broke, displaced, snapped that, fractured that, broken the collarbone on both sides. I used to ride right, now I ride left. Decided to go see my orthopedist, who I happen to have on speed dial. Smashed my titanium face mask. My right side, left humerus, the shoulder, a complete gap, just a bruised heart and lung, nothing major there. Why do you keep getting back on? I want the bull riding buckle. I always used to say I can't picture myself riding bulls when I'm in my 40s, and here I am, and I don't want to stop. Char is so dedicated. She works really hard at bull riding. She may not win, but she's there and she's up and she wants to win that buckle. I'm getting to the point now, it's like I'm 41, I'll be 42 very soon. I can't do this forever but I'm still kind of hanging on the hope that there's that chance. The gay rodeo is really unique in, in the way that we're run. It's all volunteers that put on the, the rodeos. <laughs> Hello. So I, um, I'm at the storage unit right now. Is that where you guys are at? Okay. I don't even know how many man hours it takes to actually build a rodeo. Because it's countless. My name is Travis Gardner. I often volunteer to be part of the shoot crew. We run the livestock, the rodeo. We pull the gates, we load the animals, we help the contestants get on the animals. There we go. That's all right. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do anything else on the weekend. It's, I can sit and be with my dog and I can go play and I can go go up off and everything else, but if I have a choice of getting my butt to a rodeo, when I have a chance, I'm gonna go. Without all of these volunteers, we couldn't make this rodeo happen. So how about a nice big round of applause for all of the volunteers. Rodeo is more than just a sport, it's a lifestyle. I do it because I love it, but I would love to be the best of the best. Who would you guys say are the, the best cowboys and cowgirls on the circuit right now? I would say David Rainier. David's good, David's good, very good. I'd have to say David Rainier. He's literally one of the top competitors. I think David intimidates a lot of people because of the fact he is so good. How many buckles have you won in your lifetime now? Do you know? 732. Do you actually keep track? 
How many was that? 732. No pride in that voice, though. He's one of those quiet types. He's always watching people, looking, you know, like that hog, just waiting for the right moment to pounce. He's good at what he does. Um, he's, he's good at what he does. Here comes Wade. He grabs that flag. He has what he needs. He rounds that pole. Here he comes. And stick it. 11.49. Nicely done, Wade. Coming up, David Rainier. Let's see what happens here. In comes David, he has his flag, he's around the pole. Now get it where you need it, stick it. 11 and 32, David, your new leader. How do you typically do against Wade? Oh, I beat him. First place, David Rainier. And the buckle winner, David Rainier. David I've ridden a lot of horses. I've got a horse digit that cow we just click. You know, he's an older horse, so what you see is what you get. Get up. I don't think uh, too many people would pay $2,500 for a 20-year-old horse. You know, I was running against people that were running seven-year-old horses. Good boy. You know, in the pros, they're riding $25,000, $35,000 horses. By the way. To find a horse that's a good horse yep. for a reasonable price, they're out there. You just have to be in the right place at the right time. What? I didn't say you were done. Is this what you want? Is this it? Is that it? Oh, I see. You're done, give you your treat. Is that what you want? Goodness. Well, don't swallow it whole. You gotta chew it, silly. Between the two of us, I keep him in shape and no injuries and no injuries for me. I definitely think Digit can do it this year. hadn't enjoyed himself so much in a long time. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick, a sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual, a person who demands an intimate relationship with members of their own sex. Do you want your son enticed into the world of homosexuals? Or your daughter lured into lesbianism? When it all started, it was a safe place for, for gays to compete and be out. John Beck, Denver, Colorado. But I'm probably the oldest go here. I grew up in Nebraska on the ranch. I grew up with rodeo all my life. Back when I was, quote unquote, coming out, it was uh, very, very rough. I slept with a shotgun and a pistol. Then shortly after that, my barn caught on fire mysteriously. And I had a little collie puppy that they, put a handkerchief around it and put a note on it and set her in front of the door and they'd killed her. The note said, you're next. I've driven to rodeos where you're not welcome in the city. And yeah, what do you do? <laughs> you just drove for 24 hours to get to a rodeo and get in the city and they're like, huh, you're one of them. No comment. Yeah, no. They're not cowboys. 
that characterization is so much a part of our culture. Cowboy is about tradition. That once you expose it, question it, turn it upside down or whatever, um, it drives people crazy. Gay rodeo. Gay rodeo. What do you mean gay rodeo? Gay cowboy? Stick it up your ass. They never came out and said, I will not rent to you. What they said was, I just don't see a time in our calendar that we can fit you in. They have weekends and that arena sets empty. You know, why would they not rent to us? Well, there ain't much to say, just when people find out that you know, we've got a gay rodeo, they won't hire me. You, have you heard anything? I mean, if they say we're sending it? So, no, because nobody knows I'm here. Because I just know, like, they won't really tell you anything just if you call and you try to work at a rodeo or try to take pools. And they know that you're doing gay rodeo. They'll be like, no, nah, it's cool, we already got it. We already got some, so they won't take it. It's pretty fucking stupid. As progressive as we like to think the world is, I, you know, I, I think that, that we still have a long way to go. It's a masculine sport. Goes back to the days of the Wild West when women stayed at home and the men would go out on the trail rides and gather the cattle, doing what we now consider rodeo events. So yeah, I do think it's inherently homophobic. I hate saying that because I love rodeo with all my heart. I was walking down the hall and uh, this mother and her daughter passed me in the hallway. The little kid said, Mommy, I just saw a princess. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if folks are familiar with traditional or straight rodeos, and you see they often have a rodeo queen, and that's the, um, the public image of that rodeo. Our royalty, they're responsible for our community outreach and for fundraising. What am I about to do? I am going to get pulled through the arena, probably through the mud puddles, and it's all for charity. Our rodeos are set up so that we can give money back to our charities. I mean, if you need to raise money, call a drag queen up, make a couple hundred dollars in a couple hours. We could not have done the things that we have done without the Rolty program raising a large portion of our proceeds that we make throughout the year. Tigan from Colorado. My ethic of rodeo is that if you need a hand, I will do everything I can to help you. If you got a piece of tack that broke, I'll loan you mine. I want to help you have the very best run you can have, and then I'm going to go out and beat you. I've been involved in IGRA since 1995. I was out of rodeo 12 years because I felt like traditional rodeo didn't really have an opening for gay people and that I would face discrimination. And then I met some people in Colorado that were involved in the gay rodeos, and I was excited to learn that there was a place where gay people were rodeoing. And they got me back involved, and I've been going ever since. I unfortunately was diagnosed with stage 4 ovarian cancer in November of 2009. I'm weak and not really able to compete at the moment, but reality is is that rodeo is what gets me off the couch every three weeks. Doggy, use your legs now, doggy! 
Drive over. I want to get back on my horses and I want to be competing, but okay. in order to do that, I got to fight and I got to work to get stronger and that's how it works. Ty Tigan definitely represents a lot of things that are good in this organization. Hard to beat her when she's down. She's going to fight even harder to get back up. I think that cancer is the toughest battle I've ever faced, but yeah, I think my rodeo background has helped me a great deal in being tough enough to face this and handle this and make it work. One of our members is, is battling cancer. So in Las Vegas, there was a buckle that was being auctioned off. Let's start with $100. He's got $100. I got one. Now I'm looking for two. I got two. Yeah, sorry, you want to go three, 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 All of the, the proceeds from this number will go to Ty Tigan in her continued fight. And the girls came out and laid out a number, and they put on a hell of a fundraiser. Uh, everybody was putting money in and tipping the girls, and then they decided we're gonna, you know, auction off this this buckle. It's a buckle. She's never asked for help. She's never said, "Hey, I need anything." It's just been people standing up and saying, "This is the right thing to do." I had a bad spin with my cancer this spring, so where I was was home, in my living room, listening to that group of people on speakerphone. People throwing in money left and right, and the association started battling each other for the buckle. Kids. I got, I got a proposition for you. How about 650 from those good folks? 650 from you good folks, and the buckle goes to time. Yeah. Dad, how do you say thank you to people that have done that for you? Yeah, you know, I just the words fail. I said she loves you all very, very much. We love you too, and we'll see you here soon. If you want to define what IGRA is, I think that night, you really does it. And I think that's really, to me, when I think about Cowboy Code, that would be it. It's transferable to everybody's life, even if you're not a cowboy. It hasn't been a year without challenges. I know the economy is tough. Believe me, I know it's tough. Um, do what we can do. Let's figure that out. Please, please do your part to help out produce the rodeos. They don't just happen by themselves. For so many years, our goal was to raise money for charity for our communities. Anymore, these rodeos aren't getting enough spectators to show up to break even. There are several of other regional associations that, that struggle, and we had a few rodeos that didn't happen this year because of funding and organization and people to lead them and people to get to the, their community excited. With the attendance at rodeos going down, volunteerism in general in the communities going down, with all of us who've been doing all this work for so many years, getting old, getting tired, dying, it's one of my biggest concerns is whether we'll see the IGRA in five more years. No, no. 
I kind of look at it as you take what you can get as quick as you can get it. We are going to be putting our rodeo on Treasure Island. It's the island between Oakland and San Francisco. This has never been attempted before. We're gonna be taking up a parade ground that used to belong to the military, tear up the dirt, and build our own arena right out in the middle of everything. So you'll be looking right out the middle of the bay. Being able to literally have a rodeo in the middle of the freaking bay, you know? That's pretty damn cool. We had a big hole to dig ourselves out of. How much do you need? Um, they ran around 70,000. So you have six months to do that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's not a lot of time. Not a lot of time at all. An unusually hot summer has magnified the dry conditions throughout much of the country. The Texas Farm Bureau says this year, officially the driest on record. A bale of hay is going between $65 and $85. The state is emptying itself of its cattle. We need rain now. In Oklahoma, you're seeing the hottest weather since 1936, the height of the Dust Bowl. It's pretty grim out there in the southern plains. People really don't see how much it affects the rest of the country. But for us, you know, the cowboy, our livelihood, it affects everything we do from driving down the road to feeding your, your livestock, whatever. It affects all of that. So I can, I can say that before the drought, what we bought probably could have got for about $75 is uh, $189. How long will that last you? Not long enough. It's a very expensive sport. When you're hauling a horse trailer, you get maybe 10 miles to the gallon. So 10 miles to the gallon at $4 a gallon, 12,000 miles, it ain't cheap. I have simple, humble means, you know. I don't have a lot of money behind me. So everything that I work for is fucking so rodeo. Good a friend, how good a friend are you? <laughs> well, I just got some really bad news, and so we're talking $3,500 to replace all the injectors. And call me back. Well, hello, sir. Uh, I guess my, my question to you is if you had it to put on a credit card or if you had some of it, and uh, I could definitely pay you back. Mm. Not the news I wanted. Do you rodeo? Do you get that fixed? Take the chance and go down and hope that you win enough to cover that. I'm not going to cancel the rodeo. I need to be around my rodeo family. Hey, do you have a second to talk? all my vacation days for rodeo. I count my hours, I count my days, I get my schedule ahead and plan, okay, I'm going here, I'm gonna do that. No, you're not going. They all think they're going. Oh my God, really? 
Back up, back up, back up. None of Charlene had given them to me. I could see my boys doing this, possibly, but not Charlene. I mean, this is a child that was afraid of the pony rides at the zoo. You said that Shara does something every time she's OK. What does she do? Yeah, she stands up and waves. So she, so I know if I'm here, that, that way I know she's OK. She's able to walk on. Do not going to carry her. Her grandpa, he was a matador in Mexico City. He was all excited. He thought she was going to be like a matador, like he was, until I told him no, that <laughs> she's on top of the, the animals. And he goes, oh my God, she's braver than I am. I've watched her get injured. I've watched her break bones. And it's hard to watch somebody that you really love put their life on the line. She was my only daughter. I just couldn't think of being around without her. Up next, ladies and gentlemen, turn your attention to Shar Duran from Fort Lupton, Colorado. She's hoping to last for six seconds, so give her some noise. She's so into it that she doesn't want to give up yet. And I know eventually she will give it up and it's going to be a big hole in her life. It's just a matter of time. And she'll know when, it's, when she's ready to quit. You know, I could be riding against a guy who got stomped just as bad and he can flop around lay there and cry but I feel like I have to get up and I have to move just to say, see, I can still do this. My puppy Rascal. Rascal's two years old, and he's been a great, great companion. He's a good rodeo dog, aren't you? Yes. I do think about Jackie. Twenty-eighth birthday. I get this great big box. It's a huge box. I unwrap the first box, and there's another box underneath the bigger box, a little less big box. And it finally got down to the very last box, and it was a ring box. A simple little band. Is a touching moment is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. 
I lost the love of my life in 1997. My lover, Jackie Riley, we were together for five years. We celebrated five years together that some people live a whole lifetime without. I love that shitty grin. I love that, you know, his quirkiness. Was that perfect companion? The riderless horse ceremony celebrates the bond between the rider and his horse. Today, we use the riderless horse to symbolize the bond of a cowboy or cowgirl who's gone from us, leaving the faithful horse behind. Back in the uh, late 70s and early 80s, when the AIDS crisis really came to the forefront, we lost a lot of rodeo competitors and a lot of people in our community to AIDS. I have lost friends to HIV and AIDS, but not nearly as many as people that might be just five years older than me. It is our way of paying homage to those who paved the way for us and set an example for us to follow. For those folks who survived the really, really rough years when there wasn't a lot of hope, um, they come from a different place. I found out after he had passed away that he had been HIV positive the whole time we were together, never told me. I'm not making excuses for him. I know why he did what he did, and it was a total fear of being alone. I am HIV positive. I found out the week before he died. I wouldn't wish it on, on my worst enemy, but I wouldn't be the person I was today if I hadn't experienced what I experienced. We miss all those we lost. We love you so much. And we know that you ride with us today. Towards the end of his life, I told him I really wanted to compete in rodeo. And when he passed, I was able to, to pursue that. way to the Fort Lauderdale Rodeo. It's a rodeo I typically do very well at. David Renier is also going to be there. David's not here this weekend. I got to get all the points I can. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I need it. You know, no matter who's there, you got to bring your A game no matter what. Welcome to the Mardi Gras of Gay Rodeo, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing, Fort Lauderdale? <laughs> We got some competition this weekend and some straight competition. I'm Luke Lancaster and I'm one of the straight cowboys on the Gay Rodeo. I compete in the traditional rodeo as well as the Gay Rodeo. Money's good and I got a chance and I know I'm one hell of a rider, so I got a chance to do it. I'm gonna go for it. Luke is, he's a tough competitor and he's roped quite a bit. Rode bulls when he was younger. Actually, uh, I think he had a pretty bad injury. I got temporary paralyzed in this morning. That was the last time I rode, seven, eight years ago. Everybody I said I went at least 15, 20 feet up in the air. I came down right on the back of my neck. My feet sandwiched over the top of me and a bull just dribbled in the ground. And I don't remember too much after that. Luke is, he's like me, he loves to compete. So Luke, what's it gonna take you to stop riding bulls? Casket. Let's go, boys! Up next, 
Waiter from Dallas, Texas. He needs to cover this bowl today. When I say covering, I mean lasting for at least six seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, help him out. Make some noise. All right, here we go. Not the greatest cook, but especially one handed, but we'll get there. You know, I'm gonna let it heal and won't ride rough stock till finals, and hopefully, it'll be well well enough by then to, to ride. You want to uh, hope that you're good enough that the points you have right now are, are good enough to take you to finals, but there's still that risk of, you know, not being in the top 20. You know, going to finals, the more events you are in, the more chance you have at, at winning all around. Well, you know, we know it doesn't help my, my chances being like this, so. It takes a lot more than this to keep weight up down. <laughs> Average age of a Nigeria rodeo contestant, I think, is like 42 years old. I think the only way that we're going to be able to sustain and prolong is to get some younger blood. We've got to get some younger people involved. How do we encourage the youth in a country where everyone is so driven that it's okay to slow down a little bit and get involved and get invested with something and commit your time and energy to it? Uh, not an easy problem to solve. A lot of people ask me, they're like, well, since you're gay, why don't you move to a place that's more accepting, like California, New York, and all that other stuff? No. I love Mangum, Oklahoma. Because I'm gay doesn't mean, like, I should run. But I don't want to live in the hustle and the bustle. I'm gonna live out here. I wanna be able to walk outside at any time in the day and piss off my front porch. Naked. Because I like to be naked. Everybody's shocked that I rodeo. And they're like, you're a cowboy? I'm like, yeah. You know, because I don't wear a 10 gallon hat every day and spit and ching, 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 you know. And here, if you're gay, you're gonna get picked on. And he learned to fight young, and he learned to fight hard, and he learned to fight dirty. My first fight was right there underneath that tire swing. I was raised not to take shit off of anybody. Especially coming from the sticks, you know? Going to school with a class of 51, you know? Chris, if you would just meet him and you look at him, you wouldn't think it. It's when he opens his mouth just a little bit. Welcome to the farm, y'all. In our small town, no, there's nobody. If there is, they don't come out. They just hide it. I got in a fight once at a college rodeo. Cause like, I went there, I roped and I come back and they're like, hey, you're the faggot that ropes good, don't you? I'm like, 
faggot. Would you like a piece of faggot pie? Because I'm about to serve you some. I've always team roped. I actually had a scholarship to go to a junior college on rodeo. But my first practice, um, no one wanted rope with me. And that was my first and last rodeo practice. They just absolutely shunned him. He even just quit, he quit roping for a while because they treated him so bad. Look at that gap tooth kid. You know I was a fat kid when I had a piece of gum in my mouth at all time. Um, I'm going through, I found all the prom pictures. I went to like eight or nine proms with girls. I think this is my eighth grade or ninth grade year. My ideal mate has to be a woman, of course. She would have to be a cowgirl with a cow dog that drives a pickup. She would like to ride horses in the moonlight. She must love animals to death. She would love to eat seafood and Subway sandwiches and drink Dr. Pepper. Wow, oh my God. There's really nothing to like about me at all because I really don't like anything about myself at all. I could say a bunch of bad stuff about me, but that's not the assignment. The first time I tried coming out, I was like 14 to my mother. And uh, he told me, he says, Mom, but I like boys better than I do girls. And of course, at that time, I said, well, just act like Chris and go on. I think he was about 14. It was late at night, and I heard a bang. I put a dish towel around my neck, and I jumped from my bed and swung from the vent in my room. And I thought, well, what in the world was that? And I got up and checked, and it was him. And it just wasn't meant to be, or he would have been gone, and I wouldn't have had him. Now, it was rough on him and his dad when he told his dad he was gay. Larry had suspected it. It's been hard on Chris, been hard on Larry. Part of me as a gay child feels like I'm a burden. I kind of want to like set mama down and be like, I'm sorry I'm gay. Like if I was straight, it'd make it so much easier for you. used to when he'd be upset I would know where because his mom would ask me to go find him and he'd be at the pasture just riding it relieves his stress to just go out and be on the horses and he just found rodeo as his out and that's why I think that he loves it so much I don't really know where he found out about the gay rodeos but it was the best thing that's ever happened to him I think as long as we can reach, you know, one kid that's out in the middle of podunk nowhere that's gay, that can look at this and go, I can be gay and I can still be, you know, this, this farm kid. Uh, if that kid finds acceptance in, in what we're doing, then I think we've succeeded. Oh. <laughs> you got a tetanus on it, This year's rodeo, we really tried to do something different and put us on Treasure Island. Really, really cool idea. And people get very frustrated because you're constantly managing a budget. It's countless phone calls, vendors, emails. And yeah, and every rodeo has its, I'm gonna break point. It's exhausting, 
absolutely exhausting. You're still having to do your day job. And all you do is put one foot in front of the other. Majority of people from rodeo, if you remove us from that part of our lives, it doesn't just magically disappear when the boots come off and the cowboy hat comes off. For some of us, that hat and those boots never come off. When you're on instant message with me at work, there's a picture of me wrestling the steer. And I can't tell you how many times people, is that really you wrestling that steer? And they're like, holy shit. And it changes how they talk to me. It changes their perception of me. Well, can you imagine if they all knew that I was trans and gay? Most people Wait. think of transsexuals, they often think that we're really kind of just crazy. Go, hurry, hurry. Uh, Which is the reason I try to be as open as I can about it. You were a female? Yes. It's common knowledge out here. Uh, you know, for those that can't understand what it's like to be gay, I can't understand what it's, it's like, like to, to want to have a change, so. Well, it's, it's not really to want to. You're, it's equivalent of, you looking at yourself, and every time you see yourself in the mirror, it's totally opposite of what your head says. Right. The hardest thing that a lot of trans people do is they try to erase this. I mean, everything that this is right here um, ultimately made me into the man I am today. I probably haven't pulled that out since 10 years ago. You know, I was a pretty cute little girl. And then over time, more and more and more, the masculinity kept coming out and kept challenging that and kept trying to figure out where it was supposed to be because you, know, you weren't supposed to be doing these things. Being a tomboy was okay, but that's, you know, pretty freaking masculine for a little girl. So I did things to try to make it okay. I tried wearing dresses. I tried being more feminine. I, you name it. I, it. There's not a stereotype out there that I didn't try just so I could feel better. And every time I did, I hated myself. And at the end of the day, I woke up and just going, I can't live anymore in that body. I got to a point in my life where depression was just really, really constant. And I couldn't look at myself in a mirror. And I would just look at me and I would just see something that wasn't there. The depression got to the point where I felt like I was either gonna kill myself or get busy living. I'm required to carry, for TSA purposes, a um, card that basically says that I have uh, an implant. The surgery is extremely invasive. A lot of people don't even do surgeries. For me, it was very, very important. So chest surgery, you get a bilateral mastectomy. They did a uh, radio forearm phalloplasty. So what they did was they take the tissue from my arm and they create the phallus with it. So it's, it's not a bad scar. Some people really, it bothers them. For people who don't know me, I just basically tell them I got bit by a tractor. For people who do know me, they know what this is. It may not have been what my family wanted, but it's really, for me, was a matter of life and death. This was the weekend I got to meet my grandmother as Travis for the first time. And she said, well, let me see your chest. I'm like, Nana. She goes, don't you argue with me, young man. And so I showed her my chest, you know, my scars on my chest, and she just, okay, they did a good job. I just moved on, and, you know, an hour and a half later, she was, you know, and who are you again? <laughs> and I think that's with rodeo, that's one of the reasons why I keep coming back, is because acceptance is just... They just, they don't care. So you get to come here and be you. And the common theme is, is you got a pair of boots on and you're willing to work. Who would you be without Ed Ray? I'd be a lesser man.
Midnight on the interstate And I didn't feel so great Until I saw the city And I was younger And open like a child Man, it's been a while Since I felt that way got to do good today. I'm going to be good. You're going to be good. You're going to have a good day and you're going to get lot, lots of treats. All right, folks, who's ready to rodeo Texas style? Who's going to be in the top 20 this year and get invited to World Gay Rodeo Finals? No one knows for sure until the invitations arrive in the mail. Waiter, coming up. Okay. Sweet, that catch is gonna put him in first place. Nicely done, Wade. Good morning, how are you doing, David? Okay, now we're looking for David Rainier out of San Diego, California. Woohoo! 1.29. Your new leader, David Rainier. David Rainier coming out on his horse easy. He throws the loop. Beautiful catch. It don't get much faster than that. No bull riding or shoot dogging for Wade. Wade's still nursing that shoulder injury, so he's got to rely on his horse digit for every point. Wade Earp coming up next if he can get his old dinosaur digit under control. Go. Oh, no catch. Coming up next, goat dressing. Fastest time wins. David Rainier is unstoppable this weekend. David, don't you ever get tired of winning? Uh. We are on our way to a rodeo, getting ready, trying to get back into it. 
a little bit more to it than just hopping on and going hee-haw. The hardest part is getting back after an injury because uh, memories are fresh and scars are still fresh and sometimes the pain's still there. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. What can we get for you? I want a breakfast of champions. Shara is a great competitor, you know. She has a big rodeo spirit. She needs to cover a bull, and we're close. I don't care if I'm riding two, I don't care if I'm riding 10. I'm going to make a ride today. There's other riders today. There's one gal that I know of, I just met her. Her name's Alana, she's a great girl, a tough gal from what I hear. You know, it's like all you really good girl bull riders, young like that, you all are blonde, cute like that. I'm like, God, what'd you all get, like, putting a lab together and yeah. you know you like Stepford bull riding wives yeah. <laughs> bull draw will be happening by the tower it's a random draw of the bulls and now it's the animal that we get it's pulled in the shoot it's all pure random we don't know what we're going to get until this moment Shar has 65 harry holstein i got harry holstein he's the white with the black spots uh, he's a little bit bigger than last time i was on him I this is a nice bull. You remember yes, this is. bull? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. I've been on him a time or two. So when you're going to rosin your rope, you're going to rosin in your handle and loop up around, and this whole knot's not going to slide. In. So you're set now. So when you're done, I met a really great guy. His name is Andy. He's a new bull rider. This is, was his second rodeo. Remember that. Hell, I might even buy you a beer if you do. Baby. <laughs> and uh, almost just kind of broke down, cried a little about how much he wants it and how much he wants to be a bull rider and how much he wants to make his ride. They, re they represent fears I have. They represent things I want to overcome in my life. Mm -hmm. But you know what, baby? Look at me. You've already got it. You know how much it takes to get in that chute and call that gate? You know how many people on this earth have you ever done that? How many people have the balls to even do that? I know what it's like. I want it. I trust me. God, I know it. You know? It don't take a buckle making a champion, baby. It don't. No, it don't. Trust me. All right, folks. Do you all want to see some bull riding? <laughs> We've got two women riding bulls today. Our first female contestant up for the day will be Alana out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Alana loading up in the shoes. She looks like she's ready to go. Come on, Alana. Hey, Alana, how about 68 points? Up next, we're looking for Shara Duran from Fort Lupton, Colorado. She says, I think I can do a little better on Harry Holstein. Big ass bull, folks. Shar getting ready there in the shoot. Ouch. Give her a nice round of applause, folks. That's all she's taken home today. And you were right there. You were right there in the pocket. You did good. You did very good. Yeah. Tomorrow very will be a better day. Thank you for being pleased. there for me. Not a problem. I appreciate it. Not a problem. It means a lot. Do we need to put that in here? Oh. <laughs> Seriously, you're thank so you. Oh, thank you. If you want to find out who's getting the buckles, you got to join us at awards tonight. More ready for the ladies. Your buckle for women's junior bulls goes to a lot of stand. Honestly, say this is the worst season I've ever had since I've started rodeoing. So I'd like to start um, with you this morning uh, with a lesson on attitude. Once upon a time, there was an elderly woman who was losing her hair, and she got down to the point where. She had three strands of hair, and she got up that morning and she looked in the mirror and she said, 
I'm going to braid my hair today. And so she took those three strands of hair and she braided it. And the next morning she woke up and she had two strands of hair. And she looked in the mirror and she said, I'm going to wear pigtails today. And the next morning she woke up and she had one strand of hair. And she said, oh, fantastic, I'm going to wear a pigtail today. And the fourth morning she woke up and she had no hair. And she said, thank God I don't have to worry about doing my hair today. <laughs> so I tell you that story, and I know it hits home for us uh, here at IGRA. And if we look at attitude and we, and we think of Ty, remember the attitude that Ty has. And remember that that is the attitude that we all want to have. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Ty Tygen, marching in the IGR Tough. I was uh, sick earlier in the year and wasn't able to compete this year, but I'm feeling so much better and uh, I'm on track for a comeback. And, and my hair's coming back. <laughs> yeah, that's what I tell all the mole guys. Mine's coming back. <laughs> As soon as we found out, and said, I just wanted you to know the tie passed. Maybe some of you that will look at this as a eulogy, and that's okay. Along with others who will see this as a celebration of life, and that too is okay. The Colorado Gay Rodeo Association asks that you join us as we pay tribute to our Grand Marshal, Ty Tigan, who passed away this past Sunday. We ask that anyone wanting to join us in the arena Please do so at this time. God takes so many things from her. Tragedy in the face of tough things ahead. You still, <laughs> as she said, put on your big girl panties, <laughs> pull them up and, and go on. is Travis Gardner and Travis's mom. <laughs> Travis says, make sure, mom, you better do a good job where he's sending you to shake pints.
Char. This one's for the buckle. Here we go, sir. Come on, get it. Dear waiter, congratulations. Your competition has resulted in sufficient points earned in your division to receive an invitation to compete in the finals rodeo in the following events. Even though I get this invitation, I have to have, kind of bring my A game. Did you better be ready for this? <laughs> we got some hard work ahead of us. Oh. comes down to this. This is what we work for all year long, you know. You train, you work your horses, you travel, ups and downs, everything that you can go through to get there and, you know, money and price of gas, the drought we've been experiencing, the price of hay, all that it comes down to this one weekend. And Finals is going to be big, and it's got to be big. You know, we've had some small attendance throughout the year at some of the smaller rodeos. So you're hoping that at finals you have larger numbers, you have butts and seats, you know, keep keep our Jerry alive. to be an all-around cowboy, but that's not the whole reason I'm there. My dad's actually coming for his first gay rodeo. Luke Lancaster. Finals are gonna be good. I'm ready to roll. <laughs> David Rudier. I uh, hate to lose more than I like to win. And wait, Earth. You want that top prize. You wanna win all-around cowboy at finals. What you see here today, ladies and gentlemen, are the best of the best. The top 20 in each of our events. They've been working hard all year long to get here this weekend. For some rodeo. Taping my dislocated shoulder from Florida, taping it just to protect it. This cowboy is gonna get on the back of 2,000 pounds of pissed off pot roast. But I'm not too rusty. It's been months since I've climbed on a bull or a bronc. Hanging out a rider named Wade Earp. 
from where else but right here in Dallas, Texas, ladies and gentlemen. Your Wade's come out strong on the Bulls, but he just, a couple seconds before the whistle, he's coming off. I mean, he's hard. It's, he's an older fella, and when the Bulls start bucking real hard, it's hard to cover him sometimes. Go dressing, coming up next. Chris Sherman on this next team from Mangan, Oklahoma. Not pretty. <laughs> Richard Simmons. Only one of us got the memo, though. <laughs> Here he goes. He's going to have to move it. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was proud of him just being there, but it made me nervous. I was like, Dad, I was so nervous. And he looked at me, he's like, son, you think you were nervous? You should have been in the men's bathroom about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> okay, now we're looking for David Rainier. David Rainier from San Diego, California. David's ranked number one internationally. He's coming to this rodeo in first place. Clean catch. And here comes Wade Earp on his trusty old horse, Digital. Here comes Wade. remember a couple of things. Horse and rider in this event trying to get through those poles just as fast as they can. They can touch them, they can make them wiggle, they can make them wobble. As long as they don't fall down, it's all good. Unfortunately, if you break the pattern, that's a no time. And remember, the fastest time wins. Up next, David on that easy horse. David Rainier is doing really well this weekend. He's been on his game. David and Easy making it look so breezy. I'm doing good. I would have liked to have done better in polls just now, but you know, you win some, you lose some. I'm doing really good. I think I just won the whole thing, so it's good. At least in all my robots. Is there anything you haven't been doing? It? I didn't do it the best of this weekend will win that all-around cowboy buckle, the most prestigious award in all of IGRA. Here comes Junior Bull Riding. Luke Lancaster coming out of shoot number two. Ooh, that looks painful. David Rainier, two-time defending champion, out of the gate. Wade and his horse, Dizzy. Here they come. And for that red sparrow, now get around it. Ladies and gentlemen, help him out. Make some noise. You know you're at finals rodeo when the difference between first and second place is less than a tenth of a second. That's it for today, folks. We're going to have another great, exciting day of rodeo tomorrow. Come on back and bring your friends. We have had a miracle in Texas. I don't know if you've heard, but prayers answered. It is raining in Texas. Thank God for the rain. We've been praying for rain, but we're inside, so that's all that. But this is the first substantial rain for way too long. Come on in and make yourself nice and cozy. The more encouraging thing is that people just continue to show up. They just continue to come throughout the day. Yeah, I think it's been a great rodeo. I mean, we've still got a little bit to go, but look at all the people that came down. And that's real important for the future gay rodeo.
I've just been told that this is one of the highest attended finals rodeo in IGRA history. From the financial standpoint, we look at the books, I think we're in a strong position. So that's really good news for us. I really need to do well today, you know, this is it. Make or break. Those are very cool boots. The flames coming off the dice. David Renier from San Diego hoping to continue a huge day from yesterday. Texas Cowboy Wade Earp, he knows he's got it in him to do better. Come on, old man, you can do this. Oh, it's a tight race. Wade Earp! And he sticks it. Nice time, too, Wade. David and easy. David Renier, no time. We only have one romp rider today. It's Wade Earp from Dallas, Texas. If he wants a shot at that all-around cowboy buckle, he's got to stay on this horse for six seconds. All right, kids, it's getting loud in here. Keep it up. I love it when it gets loud. That Bronc ride is gonna make this all-around cowboy contest interesting. We'll find out tonight at the awards ceremony just who the new World Gay Rodeo all-around cowboy is. <laughs> wow, what an amazing weekend. Thank you to everyone who's been involved this weekend. Our contestants, you all did a great job. And now for the all-around cowboy. You keep going through it over and over in your mind. My heart was just pounding. It was like, this is it. The new World Gay Rodeo all-around cowboy is Mr. Waiter. <laughs> If I don't cover, I will get up, <laughs> dust myself off, pack my gear bag, and put in my vacation days for the next rodeo. Why I still have the gay rodeo? I think it's real important for people to be able to compete and be open, and after your ride or, or, or after your event, jump the fence and kiss the lover of your choice. Whether they're a competitor or a volunteer or a dancer or a royalty member, we are a great place to belong. The challenge for each of us is to, to find where we fit. For a lot of people, it's rodeo.
gay rodeo is an outlet for us to like be who we are and compete in the events and sports that we love and not be judged for it. They're not just competitors that I compete with, they're family to me. You have your blood family, the people that you're born into, and then you have your chosen family. And it's great to have that support system behind you, being there when you fall down, helping you get back up. It's a place where people can be who and what they are, and nobody really cares. And that's what IGRA is. A lot of times it can be really hard, but you can be a cowboy and still be gay in who you are. You don't have to hide it. If you're taking risks in the arena and the rodeo, aren't you a cowboy, really? Maybe we ought to be forgiving and say, okay, there are other kinds of cowboys.